How would you describe your leadership style, Ms. Kotek? Inclusive. Ms. Johnson. Leadership is taking other people places you might not want to go. Ms. Drazen. A collaborative and respectful. With less than three weeks until Election Day, tonight Christine Drazen, Tina Kotek, and Betsy Johnson got one last chance to face each other and to make their best case to Oregon voters. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm David Molko. And what a night it was. Our Catherine Cook takes us through a few of the big questions, answers, and moments. <laughs> Outside our news studios, everyone knew what night it was, the debate for Oregon's governor. When the candidates arrived, KGW and our partners at the Oregonian were ready. The first question of the night, would they support Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler's plan to ban unsanctioned camping and instead ask the county to set up three massive sanctioned camps? And how would they help people get off the streets? Tina Kotek. I think it is important to make it easier for outreach teams and folks who are providing services to connect with people who are camping outside. And I think this will facilitate. But it has to be done right, it has to be done effectively. And honestly, as governor, I'm gonna make sure it does happen. Holding the mayor and the city accountable to getting people off the streets, connecting people with services. Christine Drazen. You have to know who they are. And right now, when we look at home engagement with our homeless populations in Oregon, we know that the response is almost entirely housing first. That the challenges and the problems of the people living on our street, that they're not approaching it like it's a case management challenge. That we're moving people beyond being houseless and unsheltered into supportive housing, into services, and then on to stability and the dignity of work. Betsy Johnson. I think that has been the hallmark of dealing with the homeless problem, that we can't seem to agree on the methodology. Everybody thinks their way is is the correct way uh, housing first or deal with the underlying problems uh, I, I think that it is imperative that we have metrics to measure our success so that we're not just taking people and moving them from one smaller encampment. KGW asked candidates if they thought we needed more police officers and if so how to fill vacancies. Tina Kotek answered first. When people call 911 they need to feel safe and have the right response at the right time. And we do need more officers. And one of the things the state can do is increase the number of classes and trainings that are available so local law enforcement can get new hires through that training in a more efficient manner. The other candidates answered the question in part by first addressing Kotek. Tina Kotek is the original defund the police candidate. She did not support police even when rioters were attacking a police station. It's stunning to me that she would talk now like she supports law enforcement. I will support law enforcement. Ms. Johnson. I will join Ms. Drazen in saying I'm surprised by Tina's answer because we've got to start by respecting our police. That doesn't mean walking with the rioters or excoriating uh, the police when the riots were happening. Asked if they supported spending Oregon taxpayer money to help people from outside the state access abortions, Drazen said no. Abortion is legal in Oregon and as governor it will remain so and people from other states would be able to come into, into Oregon to receive abortion services. But I do not believe that that's the proper use of taxpayer dollars. Johnson said no. Contributions are up uh, for Planned Parenthood uh, offices throughout the country, and um, I would not use taxpayer money to pay for out-of-state uh, uh, abortions, but rely on Planned Parenthood's past practice of helping financially. Kotek said yes. This is a moment for leadership and making sure that people have the care they need. And that might mean using Oregon taxpayer money to help those individuals have the care they need. And I support that because that is the world we live in right now. During the debate, there were some fireworks. Are, are you a spoiler right now? Have you ever considered dropping out and throwing your support to one of the other candidates? I absolutely have not considered dropping out. And the spoiler in this race is Tina. Tina has spoiled a state I love. She spoiled the party that I used to belong to with these outrageously progressive policies. I love this state just as much as she does. We don't need to take a hard right turn to put our state back on track. This to me is the issue. I am in this race because Oregon is on the wrong track because single party control, because one version of a Democrat compared to another version of a Democrat is not balanced. The candidates clashed on how they answered a lot of questions, but not this one. Should Merritt Paulson sell the Portland Thorns and Timbers, Ms. Drazen? Yes. 
Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Kotek? Yes. There you go, unanimous. There were a lot of memorable moments like that one. And of course, the candidates answered several more questions, some posed by our viewers on issues including education and climate change. And if you missed our live broadcast tonight, you can watch the full debate right now on KGW.com and on our YouTube page. Laurel, back to you. Well, it was lively and informative. <laughs> I hope if you didn't see it live, I hope you will watch it online. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, lots of great moments. A debate I will never forget. All right, Oregon voters, it is that time. You can expect to see your ballots arriving in the mail soon. If you are registered to vote and do not receive one by October 27th, Contact your county elections office. Ballots need to be dropped off by 8 p.m. on Election Day, November 8th. Or alternatively, this is important, they have to be postmarked by November 8th. Developing tonight, parts of southbound I-5 in Lynn County remain closed after multiple crashes that left two people dead and dozens of cars damaged. New video shows the latest. This was just before four involving a semi-truck that jackknifed south of Highway 20 near Albany. That was the third significant crash of the day. This all began with a nasty pileup between Albany and Eugene this morning. One blamed on poor visibility because of the fog. Police estimate 45 cars and 15 to 20 semi trucks were involved in that single pileup alone. One person also died in this crash. Then later in the day, a commercial vehicle rear ended another vehicle, causing another chain reaction and killing a second person. No word on how many people total were injured or when that final 15 miles of I-5 that are still closed south of Albany southbound will re reopen. What a disastrous day on the roads. Now let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. Cooler temperatures and less fog are helping firefighters make progress on the Nakia Creek fire. It's now burned just over 1,800 acres and is 23% contained. As of today in the area, all level one be ready. Evacuation notices were lifted. About 1,500 people are now under level two get set and three go now notices. And smoke from that fire meant for a second day straight, we were really dealing with air that was tough to breathe in the port Portland area still are right now. Much of the valley remains under an air quality advisory with forecasters saying it will last at least through tomorrow. In response, Portland Public Schools canceled non athletic outdoor after school activities in Yamhill County. Police made a massive pot bus seizing almost 77,000 pounds of processed marijuana. They found it at a property in rural Newburgh. The facility was being used to process and ship marijuana out of Oregon. Deputies say the street value of the weed would be up to $75 million in Oregon and at least double that in some other states. It is the largest pot bus the Yamhill County Sheriff's Office has ever made. Deputies also arrested five people. Well, tonight we are getting new details on a shooting outside North Portland's Jefferson High yesterday that police say injured two students. Police now believe they have found the shooter or shooters getaway vehicle. Police say they found a white Hyundai, which they say was stolen, crashed on North Alberta near Williams. That was shortly after shots were fired. No word on any arrests or suspects. On Wednesday, all classes were canceled. Investigators say two of the students were injured. One of them shot in the leg just outside the school gym. Both are expected to be okay.